are in the trenches with Dave Lapham. This is Dave Burke, and we're joined by the man himself, Dave Lapham, who happens to go down and, and talk about being involved in what's going on with the Cincinnati Bengals and training camp and during the season. This is the man. And Dave, today, another step closer. We've got uh, real football coming up, even though it's going to be preseason, just a little over a week away. But uh, let, let's talk about what you saw in camp on Thursday. August 4th of 2022. I saw a great defensive performance uh, from start to finish in training camp today. Um, And and really, when you look at it, Dave, like we talked about multiple times before, the defense basically carried this football team through the playoffs and and into the Super Bowl. I mean, they they hold the first two opponents, uh, you know, good offensive football teams uh, to under 20 points in the playoffs. I mean, you, you do that. You're going to win some football games. They hold the, the Vegas Raiders to 19. They beat them 26-19. They hold Tennessee uh, to to uh, 16 points, and they and they win that football game 19-16. I mean, those are those are some outstanding defensive performances, and it was based on t- takeaways. And they had nine takeaways during the course of that run in the playoffs and into the Super Bowl. Seven different guys getting eight interceptions, and um, and they ended up plus seven overall. Well, looking at it today. Uh, they also got 10 quarterback sacks to go with those eight interceptions. And in one-on-one pass rush drill today, the defense pretty much stampeded. I mean, they did, they did a hell of a job. Uh, more guys won than lost, let's put it that way. I thought the, the uh, day before yesterday, I thought that the, the, uh, the offense handled pretty well uh, most of their opponents in the pass rush drill. But today, defensively, they, they, were, they were outstanding. And boy, Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard, um, not only in the one-on-one pass rush drills, but they had a little competition uh, during the course of practice that, uh, you know, was situational football, short yardage, and and then, you know, scoring, how, how offense and defense working against each other. Offense obviously got a, a seven points with a touchdown. They scored one touchdown. They got three points off of field goals, and McPherson hit two bombs, hit two field goals of over 53 yards. But on those those field goals, the offense got three points for kicking the field goal. The defense got four points for stopping them on the drive and making them kick a field goal. So that's how it's it, it scored a little bit. The defense uh, got seven points off of an interception when they they stopped it. If you stop a drive, you get seven points. If you stop a drive with no points, uh, scored by the offense, they got an interception, a takeaway there. Uh, so that was uh, seven points. And then they also stopped the offense on fourth down one drive and picked up seven points. So defensively, they won the scrimmage uh, on the scoring system. And and really, uh, like we talked about, we talked about a couple of times already, this defensive football team is well put together. I mean, they're, they're stout and strong inside with uh, DJ Reader and uh, Tupo and, and Hill and those guys. And then on the edge, you've got Hendrickson and you've got Hubbard and you've got um, other, other guys that are stepping up and, and, and showing themselves with Cy is starting to make some noise. Uh, Jeffrey Gunter is a, uh, a rookie defensive lineman they drafted in the seventh round. I'm telling you, this guy's got some length. He's got first-step quickness. He's explosive. Um, he sustained a little bit of an injury a couple of three days ago. Didn't let it stop him. You know, it slowed him down a little bit the, the following day. But he's back showing, you know, the full acceleration, the full burst. Th- this kid uh, could make some noise on the edge. We talked about him in a, in a battle with Hubert you know, down for one of those final spots on the, on the, on the perimeter of the defensive football team. The linebackers are, are very, very rangy, covering a lot of ground. Uh, Logan Wilson's not participating in the, in the team drills, but Davis Gator is. He looks like he's got it back. And then well, like we talked about so much uh, speed on the back end, the secondary. They could be very suffocating, I'm telling you. The defense looks pretty pretty darn strong once again. And Lou Anaruma, I think, is very pleased, very uh, very excited about what, what this defense can uh, can bring. So at the end of the at the end of the scoring uh, the scrimmage there, the, you know the competition as such, the winner uh, doesn't have to run gassers and the losers do. So the offense had to run gassers. And Joe Burrow was out on the practice field today with a golf cart again. So as they're running gassers at the end, Joe Burrow is doing gassers on his golf cart with the team <laughs> just to be part of it. They're running uh, you know up up the football field, the width of the field. Uh, 53 yards up, 53 yards back is a gasser. It's one rep, and, and Joe's doing it in the golf cart. It was kind of funny, but 
Um, he's he was out there, you know, getting the mental reps again. And as far as a timetable with Joe Burrow, it's just like we talked about in the past, Dave, with respect to uh, injuries that have to be surgically repaired. Every, for example, every knee injury is different. You know, is the ACL is it first degree, second degree, third degree, complete tear? What's the surgery like? Every surgery is different. As a result of that, every rehabilitation is different. So. You know, you can't just say, oh, this is identical to that, and this is what it's going to be, and here's the recovery period. Everybody recovers at different rates. Everybody has different pain tolerances. Um, but my, my feeling is that uh, knowing Joe Burrow a little bit, that he may have toughed it out because he's got that significant pain tolerance, and he may have, uh, you know, been, I'm not saying that the appendix ruptured, but it may have perforated. And it may have uh, leaked a little bit of stomach, some of the stuff that you don't want to have a leak. And you got to make sure that you don't get infections and all that sort of thing. So I, I don't think it was a cookie cutter surgery necessarily. I think that may, it might have been a little bit, uh, a little bit more difficult than that. I don't think it was the, the uh, you know, the just um, anybody can perform this surgery kind of thing. Uh, so I, and, I, and I'm not saying it was anything that's dramatic either. But I think it, there was a significant procedure done there. So I do think that, uh, you know, Joe's going to definitely be back. He's going to be back in a decent time frame. But I, but I, I think, like we talked about, err on the side of caution and don't rush him back and, and make sure, you know, Joe's the type of guy he wants to be out there taking every rep right now. So, you know, you're going to have to pull the reins in on him a little bit and, and make sure that, that he doesn't do that. And, you know, when you have surgery like that, there's that pulling sensation. There can be that pulling uh, scenario a little bit. And you got to make sure that that, that, that is – is not an issue that you're you're not going to feel like you're you know disrupting something uh during the course of the healing process like we talked about when you're talking to throw the football and all those kind of things so um i i think there's plenty of time it's certainly not any kind of a panic mode that joe burrow's not practicing but i wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him for another couple of weeks it wouldn't shock me whatsoever you're in the trenches with dave lappin brought to you by first star logistics if you're looking for a career change, be sure to check out FirstStarLogistics.com. Dave, you talk about Joe. We have to give a little plug. We did have a chance to speak again with uh, Jimmy Burrow, Joe's father, a friend yep. of both of ours. And um, it kind of a thing where he'll go in a little bit more detail, not too deep, but he'll give a little bit more insight. So be sure to watch for that on Friday, August 5th uh, on In the Trenches with Dave Lapham on our YouTube channel and also wherever you get your podcast. Dave, I have to – Saturday, you know, the big crowd, Evan McPherson was kind of the wow factor with the big, long kick. But, man, he's consistent from what I'm hearing in camp that he's uh, showing off that leg every time he has an opportunity to do it. It's amazing. I mean, 52, 54 yards are chip shots for the guy. It, it, it's almost like you, you, you can't take him for granted, you know. It, and it, it's easy to do because he makes them look so simple. It's it's almost mind boggling now. He, he he didn't miss from over fifty today. Uh, in, in, in during the part that was the competition where he could put points on the board for his team, he he uh, he threw up you know six points. Both of those field goals were were over uh, fifty yards, and, and the holder was Chrisman. So you know he's had different snappers, um, you know different snapper Kevin Huber the holder. Um, then, then the veteran snapper with the different uh, with with the different holder. So, Darren Simmons is doing the smart thing. He's mixing it up a little bit, and he's seeing if everybody and all hands on deck can handle all aspects of it because that operation is key. And that operation with Clark Harris and, and Kevin Huber uh, for so many years for the Cincinnati Bengals has been unbelievable. They've never had a mishandled snap, and uh, you know, obviously that's uh, as we talked about. That's a a big, big load off the mind of Evan McPherson. And he doesn't even think about the operation being an issue. And he approaches that football with such confidence, and he strikes it so so flawlessly. I mean, it is so pure when the ball comes off of this guy's foot, man. It, it, it's like he's got dynamite caps in his, in, in his football cleats. And that, it, that thing just explodes off his foot. And again, with the 50 yarders today, Dave, the quick elevation. I mean, it's like it goes up an elevator shaft. I mean, this guy gets the ball airborne and at a very, very high level so quickly. There's no, there's no chance to block it. There's no chance to deflect it. He is special. There's no doubt. For Darren Simmons, we had Darren Simmons on 
<clears throat> just here a couple weeks ago. Excuse my voice there. But how hard will this decision be for Darren Simmons when we talk about Kevin Huber, Clark Harris, to make that change when you have something that's been really automatic? If these guys go into these battles and everyone stays equal footing throughout training camp, throughout preseason games, Darren Simmons is going to be put in a tough situation. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a real battle. There's no question about it. But, um, the rug will meet the road when you're live bullets, you know, against, uh, against other teams. Um, it's, it's, it's not like they're, they're, everything is dummy, dummy. I mean, they're, but it's not like a game where they're putting on a, a full speed live rush and guys are selling out and leaving their feet, trying to block the field goal. And, you know, um, it's, it, it, it's much, much different, obviously when, it's totally live in an NFL. It's been a preseason game. It's it's different than what you got at the at the practice scenario. But you know, these these young guys are going to have to knock out the veterans. They can't you know TKO them. They can't outpoint them. Um, it, it's going to have to be a complete knockout. They're going to have to just take them out um, because I I think you know in, unless Clark Harris shows in games that he just can't get down the football field anymore. You know that's that's going to be the issue. Uh, because Clark, he can still snap the hell out of it. I think that he's snapping it uh, with uh, faster RPMs than his competition, and he's he's probably more accurate uh, than the competition. So uh, you know, I don't think, although uh, Adam Midas is, is he's fine, but Clark Harris is special now. I mean, this guy, he'll he'll say he'll come up to the holder like he did with uh, Christman today. What about the laces, man? Hey, dude, where are the laces? You know, and if, if the laces aren't facing outward from the kicker, he's upset about it. You know, he doesn't want the, the holder to have to catch the football, put it down, then spin the football and spin the laces away from the kicker. He wants the laces to be already away from the kicker. And if, if they're not, you know, he makes a slight adjustment and snaps it and, boy, the laces are away from the kicker. I mean, that's, not, that's just unbelievable stuff. He, he doesn't want the, the kicker to have to worry about striking the laces and having a little bit uh, less accuracy. So, I mean, there are so many things. And he's he's really good at uh, identification of, of what uh, twin teams are going to line up in and and try to uh, you know fool him with uh, with alignments and stunts and all that thing all that sort of thing to pressure the punter. He's excellent that way. He's a really good blocker. I think the only thing now that they're concerned about is his ability to get down the football field and cover. Um, so, in and in college, Adam Ives, all he had to do was snap it and run. He didn't have to block and all that. So, you know, that's going to be an adjustment for him. The only way that Darren Simmons is going to be able to be able to, be able to evaluate how well Cal's doing that is, is to see it live in games. So the competition hasn't even really started yet. But again, like you said, if it's an even Steven competition, that's going to be, that's going to be very interesting. And in my mind, if it's that even Steven, I'm not sure that the veterans are, are displaced. I think, I think they have to be knocked out. I really do, but and we'll see. We'll see. It's uh you know, Kevin. Uh, Kevin's going to have to show a little bit more than he did. He did down the stretch of, of, of last season. I think. I think that was a little bit of concern. You know, at, at his leg fatigued, and and Darren was doing everything he possibly could to make sure that that wasn't the case. He didn't want to over overuse him during the course of uh, practice. You know, week in and week out. So, you know, maybe he'll have to tweak that even a little bit more. But and he said himself that it's not just punting anymore. You know, field goal kicking has become such a big deal that a, a punter that is also the holder, it's about 60-40 in favor of holding as far as importance of making the roster. So that's, uh, in my mind, that's a plus for Kevin Huber because he's as good a holder as there is in the National Football League. This dude has soft hands, and he and Clark Harris, Harris have a have an unbelievable connection, unbelievable operation that's going on there. So, yeah, it is. it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a challenge for sure, but Darren Simmons has been around 20 years, so I trust his judgment, that's for sure. Final question, Dave. <clears throat> Basically, a year ago when you were covering camp, you had a team looking just to get on the winning side, 500 or just above. That team ended up going to the Super Bowl, becoming AFC champions and AFC North champions. What's the difference between a year ago and this year when you come in with a target on your back? 
yeah, you're the you're the hunted and not the hunter anymore, and that's a different role, and that's something that uh, is, is a much different dynamic uh, that you, that you have to deal with. But uh, you come in with a, a sense of confidence, and, and, and it's an earned confidence because, like you said, uh, the expectations weren't that this football team was going to win the AFC championship and and go to the uh, go to the Super Bowl. So you know what it took to get there. Um, you can't take it for granted you're going to get back. That's for darn sure. The slate is going to be wiped clean. The team is going to have a little different composition to it. But you have gotten there. And you know what it takes to get there. And uh, like we said uh, earlier in some of these reports, in my opinion, this roster is much better than the roster that uh, was at training camp a year ago. Uh, up and down the roster, particularly, you know, the offensive line, the defensive backs, the, the depth that's been added, not not just frontline players because there's not that many openings as far as frontline players are concerned. But, boy, when you can improve your depth the way it looks to me that this football team has improved their roster depth, I think that bodes very well because uh, one thing you can't control is injury. I mean, you can do everything you possibly can to try to prevent it, but you can't be afraid of it. Uh, because it's going to happen, you know, <laughs> it's just a fact of life in, in any level of football. There are going to be injuries that are un- uncontrollable. So roster depth is imperative. And I, and I think this top to bottom, this roster is better all, when it's all healthy, when all hands are on deck, this roster is uh, better than it was a year ago. So, um, it, it, you know, and, and as you said, Dave, we talked about this before, you know, okay, it's starting to fighting to give it a little bit over that 500 mark. Well, they were seven and four. And they come home for two home games. I'm thinking, man, yeah, they might be making some noise. The Chargers come to Paul Brown Stadium and spank them, score over 40 against them. Um, and then they lose a heartbreaker in overtime to the 49ers at Paul Brown Stadium. Back to back games at Paul Brown Stadium, two L's. Now you're 7 and 6, and it's halfway through December. And it's like, yeah, I wonder if they're going to be able to, uh, you know, make, make the adjustment and, uh, and come back after a couple of poor performances and, and finish this thing strong. And they did. And they caught fire. And they started playing their best football. So all of that, I think, is an experience that they can draw upon. Um, so that, that's what's going to be interesting to me, uh, like, like today's day at training camp. Defense had a very, very strong day. I think part of it is the defense played well. I think the other part of it is the offense played so poorly. So, you know, I think that combination um, really exacerbates the, you know, the difference between the, performance of, uh, of both of those units in, in today's practice. All right, will the offense be able to bounce back? You know, every, everybody has a bad day, and as, as individuals do, and then collectively as a, as a unit you do. What do you do about it? Do you wallow in self-pity, or do you, uh, do you come back and, you know, correct mistakes and, and, uh, and, and vow that you're going to change it? Well, let me tell you, at the conclusion of practice, Joe Mixon called the entire offense together at one end of the football field and said exactly what we're talking about. Look, man, we, we didn't play, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to use, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to basically uh, not use all the, all the descriptions that Joe was talking about how they played, but bottom line is too many false starts, self-destruction defense played well, but the offense surely helped them by the lack of performance. So he said, look, everybody, we got to make a commitment. We got to make a commitment to change this. We can't have these mental errors. We can't have false starts. We can't have people not knowing what they're supposed to do. We can't have this. We can't have. It. He was just showing the leadership that he's shown. He brought everybody up, had the had the talk, and uh, you know broke broke it uh, broke the little gathering up. And I think all parties left the football field with the mindset: all right, I'm going to hit the meetings hard tonight. Get a good night's rest and come back tomorrow and get it done. He is Dave Lapham. You have been in the trenches, brought to you by First Star Logistics. Be sure to check out the YouTube channel, In the Trenches with Dave Lapham. Also, wherever you get your podcast from, you'll be able to hear this. Dave, as always, it's great talking Bengals football with you, especially at, you know coming off the offseason. It was a lot of excitement around this team. So a lot of stuff coming up on In the Trenches. Jimmy Burrow, Dan Pitcher, uh, Coach Livingston, we, we've got a lot of stuff coming up, don't we, Dave? We sure do. Yeah, Jimmy Burrow was was outstanding. Uh, Dan Pitcher also talking about uh, the Bengals' offensive side of things. Robert Livingston talking about the young members of the secondary. 
Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the Jesse Bates scenario with, uh, with, with Robert Livingston as well. So, you know, we got a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff coming up, Dave. And uh, I was in the locker room today trying to line some uh, some candidates up for for next week. I think we got uh, we got a, a, a good start on having some some good guests uh, uh, next week as well. So hopefully uh, everybody uh, everybody enjoys what we're trying to get done, sir. All righty. Until next time, everybody. Thank you for being with us on In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.